My name is Jeff Templeton, and I want to welcome you to uh, a celebration here of geoscience, of earth science, of geology, now earth and environmental science here at Western Oregon University, Western Oregon State College, Oregon College of Education. So uh, it's a great day to be a wolf, uh, and it's a great day to be a geology wolf. So from what we can tell, uh, we think that geology is 60 years old based on when Ray Broderson began his career at Western in 1962. And so in the records I've seen, I see no record of, of geology prior to Ray arriving here. And so for that reason, we're celebrating 60 years because it's 2022. So I want to thank everybody for, uh, for coming to campus and, and celebrating with us. As a little overview of the events, we are now in the uh, welcome reception and lecture here. And we want to be making our way to uh, the Willamette Room in the Werner Center. And we want to be there by 5.30. And it's critical that we're there at 5.30 because our brand new president is going to be there from 5.30 to 6. So it's really important so we can all meet our new president, right? And, and, and show them our enthusiasm for geology and earth science and earth environmental science. And then tomorrow morning, we will be here again uh, with some building tours, some coffee and pastries, as well as over at the uh, football stadium with a tailgate prior to the game tomorrow. So uh, with that then, um, we are going to do a little bit of a round robin introductions. And I want to introduce my close colleague, uh, Steve Taylor, who will... Um, do some introductions. So, Dr. Taylor. Hey, thanks. I thought you know we just have you know we have kind of a smaller group here. I'm Dr. Taylor, Steve Taylor, and uh, I've been at Western. Um, this is my 23rd year at Western, and uh, I'm a, a Earth Environmental Science Geology professor in Earth Environmental Science Department. Uh, I am the basically the dirt, water, and soil person, and and some computers. When you put computers with dirt, water, and soil, it makes a big mess. That's basically what I do. Um, in terms of the curriculum and so forth, amongst other things. And we'll tell you more about our program, where we're at right now. But we thought we'd just start with introductions um, and just who we are, where we're from, whatever that means to you. That, that can mean a lot of things. I'm, I'm going to say where I'm from. I'm from the Pittsburgh area originally, South Falls of Pittsburgh. And, um, and then just uh, you know, a little something about yourself you might, you might like to share, uh, you know, about what you do or who you are. Uh, and what I'll do, since we're since I'm we're since we're recording this and I'm miking, what I'll do, I just need to stand in your proximity, and I'll just come around and stand in your proximity, and you can work off of my microphone, and um, which is how we'll do it. So I'll just I'll just come around the room, just everybody introduce themselves briefly, where you're from, and you know kind of why you're here or what you do, you know what, what whatever something something about yourself you'd like to share. I'm Lee. I'm from Salem, Oregon, and uh, I blow glass. Cool. And Lee is one of our alumni, uh, <laughs> graduated with a nurse science degree several years yeah. ago. I'm Rihanna. I graduated from WU in 2015. Uh, I currently work as an environmental consultant. Um, and yeah, I'm from all over the Willamette Valley. So. It's Brianna. Uh, my name is Rachel Perot. I'm also a WU alumni. I graduated in 2006, I've been working as a geologist for the last um, almost 15 years, and um, I'm the vice president of the WOU Earth Science Alumni Society, and I'm from Washington State originally, but I've been living in Oregon since 2002. Great. Thanks, Rachel. Reading, I feel I feel like I, I'm uh, I feel like the Pope. I need to come over. <laughs> my name is my name is Jack. I was a graduate of OCE in '72, and uh, my career was teaching science and some uh, vocational education at Salem High School. Great, thanks, Jack. I'm John Purdy. I was born in Salem. I'm a retired English professor from Western Washington University. Sweet, welcome. Cindy Purdy, graduated from OCE in 1977 in elementary education. He graduated in 1978. Forgot to mention we that. Met, <laughs> we, we met here. Nice. Um, and uh, I was an elementary 
teacher up until five years ago. Great. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. I'll come back around. I guess I'll, I'll work my way down the aisle here. Uh, hi. Uh, uh, I'm Pete Singson. Uh, I'm alumni. I graduated uh, with Brianna uh, in 2015. And then I love this place so much that I decided to stick around. And I was you know, lucky enough to be hired to work in the department. And now I'm, uh, we've, I've been dubbed the department roadie. Uh, it's combat support. I'm the lab preparator. I set all this stuff up and do whatever else these awesome professors uh, ask of me. So it's fun to be here. Hey, thanks, Pete. I'm. Oh, what are we doing? Just, just talk. Just talk I'm, to me towards oh, me. I'm Bill Orr. I'm uh, emeritus uh, professor of geology out of the University of Oregon. That means I'm retired, uh, and I'm here to honor Ray. Thanks, Bill, for coming. Okay. I'm Sheila Alson. I graduated here in 2004 with a degree in earth, uh, geology, taught our science at the high school level, and um, now I'm teaching at the community college in Portland State. Hey, thanks, Sheila. Thanks, Steve. I'm Matt Buki. I graduated in 09, uh, earth science uh, major. Um, I'm currently living in California, working as a geologist down there, sort of in the engineering geology, geology sector. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, I'll be talking a little later about the Earth Science Alumni Society. Thanks, Smith. Uh, hi, my name is Taylor Hoshnowski. Uh I'm alum of 2021. Just recently moved to Albany two months ago, and not a geologist yet. I don't have that kind of job yet. So great. Well, welcome back, Taylor. I'm Joe Brooks. I'm uh, still a student here in the Earth Science Department, and be graduating. Next year, hopefully, well, the end of this year. Um, I'm fortunate to have a couple of internships working with um, Dr. Zizikowski on wildfire research and then working this year with um, him and Dr. Taylor on doing some watershed analysis for the local watershed here. So, Great. Thanks, Joe. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm Joe's wife. Uh, I, I graduated from the University of Oregon a while ago um, with a degree in archaeology and journalism. Sweet. Welcome. Um, I'm Victoria Schollerman. I'm a third grade teacher. I am the ex-president of the alumni board and here to support. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, my name is Antonia Schollerman. I graduated from WU in 2021. Um, I studied history, but now I work in student engagement on campus. Oh, great. Thank you. As I said, my name's Jeff Templeton, <laughs> and I am here to take the sacrament of Dr. Taylor. Um, so I've been at Western since 1995, um, and I overlapped with Guy and Ray, um, very fortunate. And then uh, when Ray retired in 1997, um, uh, I was finishing up my PhD at Oregon State, and um, then uh, began my tenure track position um, teaching Ray's classes on the hard rock geology and so forth, and so have been here ever since. And uh, Love it and uh, feel very fortunate uh, to be at a wonderful place with wonderful people, with a great community. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Matt, uh, we have on the schedule, uh, maybe you could stand up towards the front and just tell us a little bit about the Earth Science Alumni Society and the group that's formed in the last couple years. Yeah, thank, thanks, Steve. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for being here. I want to talk a little bit um, first before I introduce the Alumni Society um, about uh, legacy. And really, the, um, even though the name of the institution on our diplomas and our majors are different, um, we're all part of a shared legacy. And it's always been true that the legacy of the program is, or is the students the, the, and the alumni. So um, this uh, anniversary celebration is a celebration of that legacy, which is you, the alumni. So um, let's give ourselves a round of a hand. <laughs> So one thing, um, I was, as, as I was gathering my thoughts um, for this moment, um, I really like the logo of Western Oregon University and the torch, uh, the torch of enlightenment, enlightenment and the torch of knowledge. And the legacy of the program really begins with Dr. Broderson, who lit that torch in 1962 and built the, um, the values and the identity of the program and really, I think the university today, uh, when I think about Western Oregon University, to me, um, what comes to mind is sort of blue collar, hardworking, effort, being um, a, good, a good person, contributing to society, 
showing others respect and dignity, not necessarily seeking out um, recognition or doing something for the recognition, but doing it because you enjoy doing it and doing a good job at it. So uh, with that, uh, when Ray, uh, when he retired in 1997, he passed that torch on, Dr. Taylor and Dr. Templeton and Dr. Myers. And so they've been carrying that torch since. And uh, the, the news uh, with the Earth Science Alumni Society is this, that's a group of folks, uh, a group of alumni who decided to pick up that torch and continue to carry it. So for the last three years, uh, this group of alumni has been meeting uh, every two to three months <laughs> pretty re uh, regularly. And the mission and the focus of the group is to support the program and, and support the success of students uh, in their careers in geosciences. And so I would like to acknowledge, um, recognize that group and introduce them to you. Uh, and those folks uh, are here. Um, Rachel Perot, who you met earlier, and Brianna Young. Uh, the others who couldn't make it, uh, Dane Wagner, uh, Kyle Warren, Jeff Kent, Ryan Stanley, Nicole Nisconsin, and those, and so that group represents the alumni members of this steering committee uh, for the society. Our advisory members are Dr. Taylor and Dr. Templeton, and as well as uh, Scott Burns, Dr. Scott Burns from uh, Portland State. So what have we been up to? Uh, this group, recent news uh, for this group, um, we've been supporting, you know, pursuing our mission. For example, uh, recently the university came to us uh, and was interested in a proposal for the Na uh, National Science Foundation uh, for sort of STEM, STEM careers uh, and, and connecting students with a profession, giving students who haven't had the opportunities those opportunities, which, all, which is all perfect for the mission, uh, which is all, all fits really well with the mission of the university and our mission and the mission of the program. For example, with that proposal, uh, Rachel Perot, who works at Warehouser, she sought out and received a letter of recommendation, or letter of support from Warehouser for this proposal. That goes a long ways for the people who review those types of grants. So that was very powerful. That was something that Rachel did for that effort. One other thing uh, you'll hear some more news about is we're currently scoping and um, developing a proposal for a groundwater monitoring lab on campus consisting of three water monitoring wells. We want to uh, help students connect uh, the classroom with the field. Uh, it would be, it'll be on campus and um, Brianna uh, and others who are out there drilling these well, wells as a profession uh, will be overseeing that project and, and uh, we'll be recording that installation and that process so that students can then um, benefit from that as it will be turned into its sort of own, own program and curriculum. Those are the few of the uh, exciting things that, that we're doing uh, to, help, uh, to help out and, and, uh, and meet our mission. So I, I just want to say thank you again for being here. And you are the legacy of this program. And um, we, uh, we really appreciate that. And we hope, uh, we hope to continue to enjoy this shared legacy. So thank you. Well, thank you very much, Matt, and uh, thank you very much, Steve, and, and thank you, uh, all of you, for your introductions, and uh, we'll get your name. Uh, <laughs> Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey. Well, I have to come and stand next to you, because, and you can introduce yourself. Oh, I'm Mark Munson. Mark Munson. Yep. I graduated in 95. Outstanding. Welcome. Thank you. As all of you know here, we have a great location in Western Oregon. We have fabulous geology uh, accessible to us. And, and the tagline of the university uh, has recently been changed to great education, sweet location, which matches this map that I've been using for years to in, in, attract students uh, to WOU in preview day slideshows and so forth. Um, and so I'm like, hey, that tagline works perfectly with this map. Um, so what I want to do here very briefly is just give you a little uh, introduction and overview of the earth and environmental science program we have here at Western. I want to talk a little bit about our emphasis and, and how we really try to focus on students and being thinking about how we can prepare students for careers in earth and environmental science fields, uh, dating back to our legacy of Ray and Guy. Uh, from uh, the late 60s into the 1990s. So presently, there are four tenure-track tenure faculty, myself, 
uh, Steve Taylor, and two of our colleagues, uh, Jeff Myers and David Spaskowski. Also, we have four non-tenure track faculty members, and uh, of course, our uh, amazing lab preparator, Beebe Sinkson, who you met. So our mission is threefold. We're a liberal arts uh, institution, and so we focus on liberal arts education and geoscience. And one of our goals in introductory courses is to, is to develop that informed citizenry. And of course, education is a strong legacy here at WOU, and we've always had strong connections with the College of Education. And then finally, uh, when we get into our major, preparing our students for careers as geoscientists, as educators. We focus on skill development, ranging from observation, quantitative, technology, and of course, skills that are very important for the workplace in terms of communication. Uh, we also try to engage our students uh, and ourselves in scholarship. My colleague, Dr. Taylor, will talk more about that in a few moments. But as faculty, we try to stay engaged. We're leaders on campus. We have served as division chairs, as department heads, as uh, committee chairs and so on and so forth. We're engaged in grant writing, as Matt uh, just talked about, a recent grant, uh, and giving presentations at professional meetings, as well as engaging our students in research. Basically, every year since about 2004, I think it has been, our students have presented at the annual Academic Excellence Showcase. Here's Matt <laughs> presenting his poster way back when, I think it was in 1985 actually, it was right after the Nevada Del Rio eruption, right, wasn't it? I don't recognize that guy. I don't know who that. <laughs> uh, and there's uh, Ryan Stanley studying some uh, minerals under thin section there being uh, tortured by myself. We also uh, like to have some fun, but we're also thinking about career opportunities. So students from our program, as I said, education is a key pathway. Graduate school is also a pathway. But the most important pathway is into professional careers as geoscientists. And, and we take this very seriously here in terms of trying to prepare students. One of the things is we need to make sure that we can prepare our students to sit for what's called the Fundamentals of Geology exam so that they can get on the pathway for professional licensure. And that's really important in the state of Oregon because to practice, to be a practicing geologist, you need to have a license. And so here at WOU, uh, our students get this first step in this pathway towards licensure. And a number of the people that you've met here today are licensed geologists in the state of Oregon. So finally, community. And one of the things through maybe torture, but ultimately we build community with class projects, being forced to have to give a presentation and write a paper, uh, and it's due in like a week, uh, and so you're spending all night in the lab looking at thin sections, plus getting students out in the field, as well as getting them to professional meetings here. And so we really have strived to build that community, and it's awesome to see that community still alive here. So with that, I am going to shift gears to Steve Taylor. Thanks, Jeff. I thought I'd just tag along. We're tag team a bit here. Tag on to Jeff, just to tell you a little bit about some of our scholarship initiatives that we're doing right now, both our faculty and our students. Of course, our students tag along with us as, as undergraduates. Uh, you know, we're an undergraduate-focused program, so our scholarship becomes their scholarship as it's integrated into our coursework, our curriculum, and internship opportunities and so forth um, as, they, as they progress through their undergraduate degrees in um, earth and environmental science. So I just wanted to provide a little update for our faculty, where we're at with our faculty members. Some of you haven't been here for a while. Even some of our recent alumni uh, may not know all, all the activities that we have going on. Starting with Dr. Templeton, he is our igneous petrologist, volcanologist, geochemist person. We each have kind of a role that we play in our curriculum. He is our hard, hard rock geologist, as we, as we say, in, um, in the profession. And he, he has a number of projects he's been working on. Uh, one is at Newberry Volcano. He was looking at some of the older TP draw tuff, one of the older tufts that's exposed on the east flanks of Newberry. And he's been working on that for a number of years, looking at some of the geochemistry, the eruptive history, and the implications therein. 
Some of the other work he's been doing, Jeff's been very active in our general education program. He's been chair of the general education committee. He was very influential in, in the transformation of our new gen ed program. He has been involved with a number of education related, science education related projects and publications and presentations related to science education, in particular with respect to his expertise as a petrologist and some, some innovative teaching strategies in those courses. He's also more recently, and I've been tagging along with him in the field the past couple summers every once in a while, he has been working on some older volcanics, uh, about 4 million years old, down towards Bald Mountain, south of Lapine, some older, an older caldera complex, kind of a cousin of Newberry uh, to the south, and he's uh, just taking a look at that and trying to uh, get a handle on, I call it the scrappy tough. What's the name of that formation again? Uh, the, the Pearl Tough. The Pearl Tough. I call it the Scrappy Tough because a lot of places it's really scrappy, how it outcrops. But the Pearl Tough and uh, work, working that out, just working out the basics of the physical stratigraphy with the longer term goal of, uh, again, kind of looking, looking at the geochemistry and maybe the eruptive history of that area. That's kind of Jeff's gig. And then he supervised a number of students over the years and related to uh, his area of discipline with, with respect to igneous petrology and volcanology and so forth. So we've had a number of uh, student presentations as well. I believe Brianna has worked on some related, um, related uh, work to that area. Our newest faculty member is David Spakowski. He's in his third year. I have, a COVID, I have a COVID unconformity in my memory. He's in his third year. And David is our GIS remote sensing person. He finished his PhD at Texas State University San Marcos in the geography program. And he comes to us uh, with a remote sensing background. His specialty, his dissertation specialty, was uh, fire risk assessment in the Tetons. And then, of course, he's been working on that um, area of, um, of study here. He's brought that work with him from, from his dissertation work. But also, more importantly, he's, been, he's jumped right in. He's active, been working on the Labor Day fires 2020. Very good place to be if you're a fire risk person, right? Because we've had, we have fire risk and climate change going on. So he's been working on that. He's also been involved with Brian Dutton and myself on a, uh, we're looking at invasive plant distributions along Ash, Ash Creek drainage, which is right to the north of campus. And we're using some drone technology there to do some remote sensing and plant identification work with Brian Dutton and some of the biology and uh, plant systematic students. And Joe's been working with us as a student assistant on that. Joe's also been working with David on the, some of the fire assessment as well. And so Joe's been involved with GIS and remote sensing and uh, has his uh, drone pilot's license. So, he, so David's brought that drone technology to us. Very exciting. And then he's also been working, he started working with uh, Gareth Hopkins down in biology on uh, working on uh, uh, turtle populations out on uh, Minto Brown Island, some local uh, looking at invasive uh, species. And so David's, David's doing some work with uh, Gareth as well in biology. And then myself, I've been up to a wide variety of things, mainly continuing, I'm, I'm kind of the dirt and water person, so doing watershed analysis in our local watershed, as well as some of the work that I had done for my dissertation back in the Appalachian region, where I'd done my dissertation work. And so I've been looking at some LIDAR-based hydrologic models for some of the watersheds and trying to tease out the influence of bedrock geology. More recently, as Jeff alluded to, and also Matt, we just recently submitted an NSF proposal this past summer. We worked with some uh, writing consultants that the university has hired, and we are looking at basically trying to figure out ways to attract under, underrepresented minorities to the profession. And it's a program in NSF called Geopathways. And it's very much aligned with the type of inst uh, institution that WOU is. We have some changes coming on. We're, we're working towards... Um, Hispanic serving institution status. So this was a perfect opportunity for us in earth science and geoscience to put together a strategy as how we might go about working with underrepresented populations, attracting them to the STEM sciences, and then more importantly, connecting them with careers as geoscientists. And so we had some help from some of our colleagues that Matt, Matt was discussing. So that's in review right now, um, you know, our fingers crossed. But we got lots of good ideas out of that writing process. That'll be a work in progress for the next couple of years. Whether it's funded or not, we, we have a, a number of ac action items that we can pursue. Dr. Myers, who isn't here today, he's our paleontologist, paleobotanist. 
And he has been working on a wide variety of looking both at ancient and more modern plant distributions, mainly Oregon and California. He also um, does, he has been doing some consulting work as well in terms of uh, 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 paleontological studies for um, resource development. And so he, he remains active and has, uh, is active in his area. And then um, that is kind of what we have and our students tag along with that. So with that said, that's kind of an update of where we are, our scholarship, our activities, and of course our students are integrated with that both as research assistants and, and in their coursework as we, as we dovetail these activities into our classes and our class curriculum. With that said, we'll kind of get to the latter part of why we're here is to Think about the legacy of earth science, and the roots really do go back to Papa Ray, Ray Broderson. And Bill Orr is here. He's going to tell us, tell us a few stories about Ray and some of his perspectives back in time. And then um, we'll also, uh, later on, uh, we're moving from here over to the Willamette Room. We also have a very nice photo montage. I went through all of Ray's slide collection the past couple of days. Have a very nice photo montage of some of the history of Ray and his students and his family and Dory and his family and kids, so it's, it's very sweet. So we'll, we'll kind of be pursuing that the rest of the evening. But uh, Scott Burns, Scott is a very good colleague. We were just on a field trip with him a couple, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, whatever it was. But Scott, Scott's a big supporter of the WU Earth Science Program. Rachel was one of his master's students. Um, of course, Sheila is, is connected with PSU. Um, we, we've had, uh, we have a number, a number of other students who have gone to PSU. PSU is very good master's program, a, a good uh, stepping stone from here into graduate school. So we've had a number of students go up there. So anyhow, Scott, Scott's very familiar with us, and he also has worked with Ray. So Scott couldn't be here. He's traveling this weekend. He sent his best. I'll just give you the synopsis of what word, words from Scott. Scott, of course, has lots of words. Congratulations to the Earth and Environmental Science Program at WOU. This is a significant milestone. You all have been producing quality geologists for so many years, and your graduates are found throughout our profession not only here in Oregon, but across the U.S. I especially want to thank my good friends who have been teaching quality courses for years in Monmouth and have been creating field-based courses that prepare the students for the real world. I would really like to thank my good friend, Dr. Ray Broderson and his wife, Dory, for the many years of great teaching and also his commitment to registration of geologists in Oregon. He managed the state geology exam for years. I had to pass the test to get registered in the early 1990s. I would be, uh, be here to celebrate, but I'm giving a talk today at Stanford, and again, congratulations to all. So Scott's a big supporter, and he's also been working with the Alumni Society. Um, he's very active as an engineering geologist. He's a professor emeritus now for PSU, uh, and, he's, and, and he's been working with our alumni group as well, and he serves as a mentor to that group. So I want to thank Scott for that. With that said, a little bit about Ray. Ray did his applied baccalaureate degree in uh, Fresno State, he's from California, and uh, finished his PhD at the University of California, Berkeley in 1962. His area of expertise early on in his research interest was petrology, structure and age relationships of quartz monzonite in the central Sierra Nevada, California. Jeff just went down to the archives in the basement, found his dissertation on the shelf, and kind of pulled out some information. And uh, so, so Ray, Ray's basically a, an igneous petrologist and, and a, a, a geologist at heart. He worked at OCE and WASC from 1962 to 1997 when he retired. He's been in the uh, Emeritus Society since then. Ray used to come, come around quite often, not too much, but just enough to check in on us. Occasionally stop in early on in the early days when I was working here. Uh, we haven't seen him as much over the years. I haven't seen him for a couple of years. We had a little grand reopening for the remodel of the building. So it's been a couple of years since I've seen him. He uh, is a legend in the state and uh, very much connected to our alumni, to a lot of teacher preparation. He and Guy Ruth, uh, Helen Woods, who was in the College of Education back in time, Adele Shepage later on, many of our colleagues uh, that go back to the College of Education days. Ray was also, I, you know, I've heard lots of stories. It was all, all, of course, before I arrived here. Ray was dean for a while. He had kind of a, a interim dean appointment. And so he, he made huge, he and Dory were, made huge con uh, contributions to the community and to the university, along with the other generation of professors that were here at his time, at the time he was here. 
and, and of course we owe our foundation. We, we, I was mentioning to Beeb the other day as we were pulling out field trip slides. He's like, God, these look like our field trips. I was like, yeah, we didn't invent this. We're just keepers of the flame. <laughs> and so, you know, we didn't, we didn't invent the game. We, we just are part of the game, and, and we are the keepers of the flame. And, of course, Ray and Guy and the other faculty on campus kept WOU alive all those years, and then we were lucky enough to inherit that. With that said, we have Bill Orr here, um, as, as he mentioned. Bill, I'm going to have to stand next to you a little bit so we can, I'll pick you up on my mic. And Bill, as he mentioned, he's a, a professor emeritus from U of O, uh, a legend in his own right of Oregon geology. In fact, wrote the book on Oregon geology and also a, a, very, a very good friend and colleague. I've been involved with Bill over the years with the State Board of Geologists Examiners and just in general. Uh, he's, he's a great colleague. I want to thank him for being here. But, but uh, Bill knows Ray, and, and they go back in time. He was going to, uh, he offered to tell us a few words about Ray and some stories, whatever he has to offer. And I'll just stand right next to you like, my, like I'm your buddy. <laughs> thank you, Steve. Um, yeah, take a look at the tie. The tie means that Ray and Dory are tie worthy. None of you are tie-worthy. <laughs> the last time, I swear, the last time I wore this tie, Abraham Lincoln was president. <laughs> no, it's true. I don't wear a tie at all. Uh, a couple of remarks. Uh, and I'm here basically to honor Ray and, uh, and Dory. And I came to Oregon uh, as a young assistant professor a little over 50 years ago. That's a half a century, 50 years ago, and my mentor was Dr. Baldwin, Ewart Baldwin, who had written the original book, Geology of Oregon. And one of the things that Ewart did was he took me on the grand tour. We went to uh, Oregon State, and he introduced me around, like showing off a new baby or something like that. He went here, we talked to, uh, we talked to Ray, he taught, we went up to uh, Oregon State here, we went to PSU, and then finally to Dogami, to the State Department, and he introduced me around. And in each place, he'd say something, it was always something nice about the, pre the people we were meeting. Later, as we drove away in the car, uh, he, said, talk, he was talking about Ray, and he said, Ray is uh, not afraid of administration, like I am, and he is good at it, but he said Ray's strength is he, he's the best speaker, and I see mean the, the best lecturer. No, he's the best speaker in the whole state. And I looked at you, and are you serious? He said, have you heard me lecture at all? <laughs> and he said, no, that's, he's, he can sell anything. And uh, after I had a chance to know Ray a little better, and I'd seen him in action in the, in the Oregon Academy of Sciences as a master of ceremonies there, I was impressed, very impressed by that. And anyway, uh, you had a lot of respect for Ray. Let's see, what else? He, um, we, you cannot uh, state enough about his starting registration for geologists. That was a big thing. It was a very big thing. And I'm glad to see that's mentioned in his uh, vita. Ray and I went, uh, Ray and Dory and I, uh, we went on a river trip over in Idaho, uh, it was years ago, um, and he had about a half dozen students, dozen students, and I had a half dozen, and in each place we did this kind of mutt and Jeff routine where I was mutt, okay, anyway, you do this, this routine, was that Rowan and Martin, do they get that? Okay, all right. <laughs> Maybe, anyway, probably not. He, went, he did a, where anything hard rock or structure or tectonics, he did that, if it was, I do paleontology, so if there were sediments or fossils, that's what I would do. And we stopped at this one location, and there was, you could see, there was a Columbia River basalt layer on the horizon, the, above us, and down, the river was cut into some metamorphics, and so you can imagine there was a big unconformity between those. And we got out, and I said, what am I going to do here? In any case, uh, Ray just looked around for a minute, then he walked over and put his hand on the contact, okay, between the basalt, Miocene basalts and some Paleozoic unit that thing is going over, and he uncorked a two-minute talk. There's nothing more abstract than an unconformity. You would agree? I never got that straight. I mean, it's hard to conceive a, what, what's happening in unconformity. But he uncorked a two-minute talk 
that I could not believe it. He summarized what an inventory was. And believe me, a collie dog would have been able to understand that. <laughs> it was that way. I can't say enough things about Ray. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Really appreciate that. I do. I do have one. Uh, I do have one Ray story. Uh, of course, he retired before I got here, and of course, I, I would interact with him. You know, he'd walk through and check the office and check in on us once in a while. Or he'd need something. He'd be looking for something. He was running field trips for quite a while. He was involved with uh, Elder Hostel running. He was running river trips for quite a while. In his early in his retirement. But uh, my, my story about Ray, though, is even though I didn't work with him directly, I was in uh, Fossil, Oregon for a Memorial Day weekend way back, I don't know, 15, 20, 20 years ago. It was Memorial Day weekend. I don't know if you've ever been to Fossil Memorial Day weekend, but that is the home of the biker rodeo where all these Harley, bike, Harley motorcycle enthusiasts, which is a pleasant way to put that, have a rodeo, a motorcycle rodeo. Like all the things you do at a rodeo on motorcycles. And so that's a very interesting time in Fossil, Oregon, if you've ever been there. And uh, there's not a lot in Fossil. There's a little mercantile. And then there's, of course, uh, the shamrock watering hole, the shamrock, the chamois, we used to call it. And I was sitting in the shamrock on a holiday weekend, late in the afternoon, Memorial Day. And I sit in there to get a cold, icy cold beverage. And there are a lot of bikers and people, you know, around this holiday weekend, there were motorcycles up and down the street in Fossil, which, you know, is like one street long by two streets wide kind of place. And I'm sitting there next to somebody and I strike up a little converse, you know, just a little tavern conversation. Oh, what do you do? I was like, well, I'm a geology, prof you know, geology professor at Western Oregon University. And that just started it. Oh, I went to Western. You know, Ray Broderson, Ray Broderson. It just, the story just went on about Ray and the field trip and my dad and my, you know, my mother is a teacher. And this whole, this whole story goes on and ensues. And that's when I, and we were out in Baker City, you know, the whole, the, this whole story. And that's when I realized Ray is everywhere. I mean, he was just a, uh, in the woodwork in this state, so well respected and, and so just notable and always known, as Bill, Bill mentioned, he's always associated with stellar field trips and stellar presentations and, and just being an excellent teacher. And so that's, that's kind of my Ray story. You never know where you're going to run into the ghost of Ray, even at the Shamrock during the Biker Rodeo weekend, Memorial Day weekend in Fossil, Oregon, which is not a place you'd expect to hear about Ray. Cool. That's my Ray story. Um, Jeff, what do we have left here? Well, as uh, Steve indicated, we... He's put together a, an amazing uh, montage of slides. So Ray um, was an avid photographer, and, and he had these slides very inc incredibly well organized. And, and then we have subsequently put them in archival grade uh, photo sleeves and have them stored now. So Steve's got an amazing, amazing uh, sl slideshow that will be running through the, through the happy hour and the dinner. And I, I want to thank uh, Bill so much for sharing and, and taking time to come here and, and, and honor Ray as you did. I uh, greatly appreciate that. So uh, give yourselves another round of applause. Thank you guys very much. And with that, we will conclude this portion of the festivities.